Today I've got another AMD Fusion product to unbox. I already unboxed one mini ITX board, but this is a larger AMD Fusion board. So this is a micro ATX motherboard from ASUS. It's the E35M1M Pro, and I'm gonna show you guys what ASUS has to say about themselves with respect to this board. So they've got their Protect 3.0 technology, which is about Okay, protecting the earth, which means it's eco-friendly, and I'll tell you right now, AMD Fusion is definitely eco-friendly. It uses very, very, very little power. Okay, protects your devices. Apparently it has anti-surge protection, which detects over-voltage conditions and prevents voltage surges from spreading in real time. And also protects you. So they say they have special low-radiation design shields that... Oh, a special low radiation design that shields you from harmful electromagnetic exposure by eliminating 50% of radiation. So that's their Protect 3.0. They've also got serial ATA 6 gigabit per second, that is SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, as well as USB 3. Solid capacitors on this board, AI Suite 2, which is their software, as well as an EFI. Oh, interesting, it's got an EFI BIOS. Neat. Okay, so here we go. Integrated dual core AMD Zekate, Zekat. Zekate, sure, we're going to call it Zekate. 18 watt processor, the chipset is AMD Hudson M1, and we're going to find out all the rest of that stuff about the board once we open it up. It does feature HDMI, it says that there, and let's see what we've got in terms of accessories. So the first thing we find is a SATA cable, or rather two SATA cables, four total. So these are ASUS's SATA 3 6 gigabit per second cables, which are identical to SATA 2 3 gigabit per second cables, other than the white marks on them. So there's two right angle and two straight. We've got an IO shield. We've got a user guide. And we have a driver DVD, which, as well as an ASUS sticker. So you should throw this away, download the latest off of the ASUS website. Inside, we find the motherboard itself and a cat. Oh, please. Okay, so let's take that out. So this is a very small micro ATX motherboard. You can actually tell from the fact that it is not really very square at all. So here, I'm going to get directly over top of it so you can see that the, um, like the proportions are more like an ATX board in that it is quite a bit longer than it is wide, whereas an MATX board would normally be more like about here and it would be more square. But it is a micro ATX board, so it only has the mounting holes for micro ATX, and it has four expansion slots instead of the seven expansion slots that are standard on ATX. In the middle of the board, where I would normally expect to find a CPU socket, I actually find only a heatsink. So this CPU is actually pre-soldered onto the board. We've got a nice passive heatsink on here, so you can see the overall design of the heatsink. It's got a lot of fins on it. Now, ASUS has, for the sake of branding, thrown a little ASUS uh, label on the top of it, although uh, it looks like that would come off fairly easily if you wanted to get slightly better cooling out of it and you didn't care about the nice little ASUS symbol on it. Okay, we've got what appears to be a three-phase power design with our four-pin power connector in the top left location, its ideal location. We have a CPU fan connector for reasons unknown. Well, I guess if you wanted to just, you know, bolt, slap an 80 mil fan on there, you could plug it in there and then it would be controlled via the CPU fan options in the BIOS. We've got two uh, DDR3 slots, so those are gonna support up to eight gigs of memory. We've got Turbo Key 2 up here. We've also got a 24 pin power connector at the right hand edge of the board in its ideal location and five, well, it seems like an odd number, but I'll explain why in a moment. Five SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. Here's our clear CMOS as well as our BIOS chip. Moving down, we've got our front panel connectors, four USB 2.0 front panel headers, Firewire as well as front panel audio. The expansion slots on this board look fairly optimal, so we've got a PCIe 16X. If you were to use a dual slot graphics card, although I can't imagine why you'd want to do that on a board like this, it would cover up this PCIe 1X slot and leave two PCI slots. However, if you were using something more normal, like let's say, let's say you wanted to use this for a low-powered home server and you wanted to throw like a 24 a uh, 24 drive RAID card in here or something, then you'd still have access to these three slots. I really can't imagine any reason you'd use a dual slot card in there. Um, on the back of the board, we've got 
for USB 2.0, we've got a PS2 port. I've got a cat attacking my leg, which is distracting to say the least. We've got optical audio out, HDMI out, DVI and VGA are also other video options we have available to us. We have Firewire, eSATA, two USB 3.0 ports, Gigabit Ethernet, and 5.1 audio. Although remember guys, 5.1 audio with three jacks, as if you're using 5.1, you will not have access to the microphone in. So bear that in mind. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the ASUS E35M1-M. Actually, hold on. Hold on, that's not exactly the model. Oh yeah, yeah, the E35M1-M, that's correct. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other videos. Don't forget this is an APU, so that is a CPU and a GPU in here. It is a DirectX 11 GPU and a dual core CPU. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Go do it now. Don't be lazy.